All right. Okay. And we're live. Um, what's up, everybody? Um, you're here for the How to Build a DAP on Cello workshop. in a second, but I'll just say, so this will be recorded and streamed to YouTube. If you guys wanna watch it after, I will share the uh, presentation link in a second as well in the chat. And if you guys have any questions along the way, feel free to drop them in the chat or the Q&A uh, section, and I will try to call them out for you for Josh. Um, so let's get started. Josh, do you wanna do a quick introduction and, and tell us about Yeah, yeah, thanks, Connor. Yeah, so as Connor said, um, we're going to go over how to build a DAP on Cello today. Um, so I'm Josh Kreitz. I'm working on developer relations at uh, C Labs. I'm part of the product team. And yeah, as part of developer relations, I'm really focused on education. So helping people um, learn about Cello, build on Cello, um, but also focus on research. So um, talking to developers and figuring out what pain points are. Um, and how we can improve developer experience and help people be successful um, building products on Cello. So yeah, let's jump in. Just a quick overview of what I'm gonna talk about today. Um, I'm gonna give a quick overview of like types of things you guys can build. Um, there's a lot of things you can build on a blockchain platform. So I just wanna like go over some of the projects that are currently being built, um, get some ideas. I want to give a brief overview of important blockchain concepts. Um, building a product for blockchain or just a project for, for blockchain is a bit different than uh, traditional Web2 apps. And there's some there's some core concepts that will help you think about like what's possible when building on, on the blockchain and uh, what's not possible. So we'll go over that. Um, and I'll go over some developer tools, like general developer tools that you'll use no matter what type of application you're building. I'll dive into some specific smart contract developer tooling that will be useful. And then I'll share a list of resources to learn more and then we'll go into a Q&A. Um, so yeah, to start, just a quick review of um, what Cell is and what we're trying to do here. So Cello is all about empowering and meeting the needs of all people uh, by creating an open permissionless platform that makes financial tools accessible to anybody with a mobile phone. So one of the early promises of Bitcoin and, and blockchain was to bank the unbanked. And this vision hasn't really been realized for, for a variety of reasons. And user experience is a big one. Um, user experience has been central to the design of the Cello network from the beginning. and to the tools that we are developing at C-Labs. And we think that user experience and developer experience is central to gaining adoption. And this is a key differentiator from other blockchain plat platforms. Um, Cello has been developing a full stack approach. So from the beginning, um, the C-Labs team has been working on the protocol, but also developing a wallet in conjunction. So like any problems that the wallet team faced um, would be relayed directly to the protocol team and like protocol adjustments could be made to make a, a friendlier uh, end user experience along the way. So um, that's one of the things that really attracted me to come build on Settle in the first place. Um, and that's core to the Make a Mobile Hackathon, um, really building products that uh, meet people where they are on their mobile phones. So part of building a good user and developer experience is creating a robust developer community built on quality developer experience. Um, we need a community of developers, designers, doers, and dreamers. And we pay close attention to how everyone experiences Cello, whether they're transferring value, building community, or developing applications. And that's really the impetus behind this hackathon. Um, yeah, and I'll just highlight some of the Cello core features that differentiate Cello from other blockchains. Um, Cello has stable value currencies as a native part of the protocol. Um, one of the initial pieces of research that was done when uh, the early team was figuring out what was needed in, in, in a new, uh, well, just in any blockchain platform or any platform that would provide value to end users, um, having stable value currencies is key. Um, 
Bitcoin and Ethereum are extremely volatile and they're not actually good for transferring value among people. Um, if the price of Bitcoin drops by half or doubles tomorrow and you're paying paying for goods with this, this currency, um, it's not very attractive for merchants or people holding in savings accounts. So stable value currencies is a core, um, core need for end users. Um, another, another feature um, that really makes um, Celo unique is the mobile identity system we have. So we have a mapping of phone numbers to public keys to help facilitate user experience. And what this does is allows me to text Celo dollars um, or Celo to anybody with a mobile phone. Um, so I don't need to know their 40 character letter number address um, that is really only useful for like copy and pasting around between wallets. Um, I can just like text my brother Celo dollars and be sure that he will receive those Celo dollars, um, even if he doesn't have an account on Celo yet. So um, this this mobile identity system isn't limited to phone numbers. Um, we can also expand it to include email addresses and other other forms of identity, um, digital identity. But we started with phone numbers because we are focusing on mobile first. Um, and then another. Another key feature that improves uh, user experience is the ability to pay gas in multiple currencies. So for those of you that are familiar with Ethereum, um, you need to hold Ether to pay gas for any transaction, regardless of the um, token that you're sending. So for people that want to transfer stable value currencies on Ethereum, you essentially need two currencies in your wallet to, to make those payments. And for people that are less familiar with Ethereum or how blockchain works, um, this is just another point of friction. So um, on Celo, you can actually pay gas in Celo dollars. So you can only have Celo dollars in your wallet and you can send those Celo dollars. Um, we're expanding the protocol in the next month or two to include other stable assets. Um, well, Celo Euro specifically. So this will be a stable asset that's pegged to the Euro. Um, so people will be able to hold Celo Euros and just transfer and pay for fees in Celo Euro. Um, so that that is a feature that is adjustable through on-chain governance. And like as our stable value currencies expand on the Celo network, um, the gas payable in multiple currencies will expand as well. Um, so yeah, these are just some of the things that make uh, Celo more attractive and more usable for um, people less familiar with crypto. Um, I want to jump into types of things that you guys can build. Um, so this is a non-exhaustive list of, of things, but these are just some initial ideas that I wanted to highlight um, because there's quite a range of things that you guys can build. And on Ethereum, if you guys are familiar with Ethereum or even in, in Celo, like we talk a lot about smart contracts and the capability of um, writing your own contracts and designing DeFi. Works, um, you can lose your funds or your users' funds. And um, yeah, when we're building applications for financial inclusion, we want to be sure we're doing things properly. But um, it is possible to build very popular applications um, without writing smart contracts and having to know how to do all those things. Um, at C Labs, we're very focused on the initial use case of just transferring value between users. So that doesn't actually require any um, writing smart contracts to participate in this aspect of the protocol. So that could be things like integrations um, where you're just sending payments between users or you're participating in existing um, savings pools or DeFi apps where um, you don't actually have to write and deploy contracts, but you can just um, leverage existing ones. Um, we've seen popular applications that are just essentially merchant integrations that make Celo more usable for people in certain geographies. Um, and a lot of the apps I've seen come out in the past couple of months are, are around like governance and protocol contract integration. So um, these are things that are, are already live on the Celo platform. Um, and the user experience isn't top notch right now. Um, 
in the sense that it's inclusive as it could be. So we have like command line tools for interacting with core contracts or um, people have been writing custom like JavaScript scripts and these are not approachable things. Like we can't expect everybody to be participating um, in the seller protocol or interacting with the protocol um, through these tools. So just things that improve accessibility in these ways are super useful. And while it's also falls in that domain, a lot of these uh, governance and protocol contract integrations are coupled with uh, existing wallets. Um, oops. That being said, um, we do encourage people with the skills to develop DeFi applications. Um, Mula and Ubiswap are two examples of, of applications that are um, gaining popularity on, on Seller right now. And then um, some of these new use cases that we're seeing that don't fall into like the traditional DeFi space or just like uh, more, more basic integrations are um, development of NFTs, like the NFT space is exploding on Ethereum right now. Um, but we've also seen a universal basic income project called Impact Market, which is probably one of the most popular apps on on Cello right now. Um, we've seen crowdfunding through the app called Doni, and uh, Project Ren is doing carbon offsets. So, um, the Cello blockchain is actually carbon neutral or carbon negative right now. Um, we're offsetting carbon more than we're actually uh, consuming. Uh, securing the network. Um, and there's more more projects on sellohub.org. Um, I'm just gonna jump over to, to that page real quick because there are a lot of good projects here. And I highly encourage you guys to check out this page and just see what people are building. Um, Cause like I've been looking at a lot of these uh, re over the past couple of days and a lot of them aren't actually DeFi apps or um, even using smart contracts, they're more related to um, just increasing accessibility to the network, which is is really what we want. I mean, we're trying to build an inclusive financial system and, and accessibility is, is primary. Um, I've got a few more tabs open. I'm just gonna jump through some of the projects to um, give you guys some inspiration around like what is possible. Um, but yeah, I, I highly recommend you you go through Cell, or Cello Hub and, and look through these projects yourselves because there's links to all the GitHub repositories and the websites, so you can learn more about the project as well as see how they're doing, um, how they're building these things. Um, one of my favorite things about the Web3 space is that most projects are happening, um, they're being developed in the open source way. So they, they all have GitHub repositories and you can actually just go and look at their smart contracts. Um, you can see how they're written. You can actually take their contracts and cite them in your own projects um, without having to write them yourself. Um, but yeah, just to jump back to some of the cool projects that I, I wanna highlight. Um, Resource Network is a really cool one and they're doing um, essentially building personal credit lines, um, which I think is kind of tangentially related to like community currencies in the sense like I can create my own personal like Josh credits and then use those credits to purchase things at businesses that are participating in that network. Um, so it's really like thinking about how we can create currency and, and share value in new ways. Um, it's really cool. Um, impact market I mentioned, this is a, they're calling it unconditional basic income. Um, they are launching communities in favelas in Brazil and they're giving participants around a dollar 50 a day in CUSD if I'm not mistaken. Um, and they're distributing funds through a smart contract that they've written themselves, but they're um, encouraging their users to use Valora, which is a wallet developed by C-Labs. And once these people receive CUSD, they can convert it to Celo through the on-chain exchange, or they can start participating in some of these DeFi primitive applications that are being developed. So um, we can actually see a lot of details on their site about how much they're actually distributing. So. Um, this has been really cool to see. Their growth has been phenomenal over the past um, year. And I think it was even a year ago, I was talking to Marco who started the project and they hadn't started anything. So they've made amazing progress over the past year. Um, and one of the DeFi primitives I'd like to highlight is Moolah, um, essentially a money market on Celo. So this allows um, traders to like 
short cello assets, um, cello assets specifically, but it also allows people holding cello or cello dollars to lend their assets to people and earn interest. Um, and this, these rates available to people are much better than in traditional um, banking applications. Um, it's also accessible to people that don't have access to traditional banking applications. Um, just like increasing these like basic financial services for for people and like you guys can leverage Rula in your um, projects to allow people to earn um, interest on as little as I mean a fraction of a cello dollar. Um, so yeah, it's really cool to see what they're doing. Um, Hummingbot is another interesting project. Um, this is not directly related to writing smart contracts or anything on cello, um, but this is an arbitrage bot that essentially allows people to earn value based on arbitrage opportunities um, between exchanges um, and the on-chain exchange in the Cello network. Um, so if you're developing an application for Cello, you don't necessarily have to build something that's directly doing a lot of activity on-chain. Um, you can do some, some higher level like monitoring of Cello um, and do something where you're um, handling data and kind of suggesting to users how they can how can use use the Cello network. Um, Toka is another really cool project um, that is helping distribute Cello and Cello dollars to people performing micro work on mobile phones. Um, I know they've done research where they're. Uh, basically observing how people in Africa like are doing image recognition tasks for like machine learning tools. Um, and the payments in infrastructure behind those applications is slow and expensive. Like everybody's probably familiar with PayPal. Um, they have like a minimum fee and then they take a pretty large percentage. I wanna say, I mean, it's in the single digits percentage um, for any payments that you make. And that's substantial when you're only earning on the order of dollars per day. Um, so Toka is helping address this and using uh, Cello as a payments network backend for um, performing micro work. It's really cool. Um, Ubiswap I mentioned, this is a, a DeFi exchange. So um, as the Cello token ecosystem expands, um, trading between tokens will be, Ubiswap will help facilitate the trading between tokens. Um, and this is, I think it's a fork of Uniswap or SushiSwap from Ethereum. Um, so this is another project where they're just leveraging a lot of work done already on Ethereum um, from an open source project and just um, redeploying it on Celo since Celo is so similar to um, Ethereum. So yeah, I'm not suggesting that you guys build anything in these domains specifically, but I just want to give you guys an idea of um, what is currently being built and potentially things you could interact with um, as you as you start building your projects. Um, so given that we went over like a large scope of potential projects, like I don't want to go too deep into how um, you'll build any specific one thing because there's such a range of things you can build. So I, when I was thinking about how to structure this talk, um, I was like, the there's more commonality among these tools in terms of what tooling they're using to build their applications than like what their product actually is. Um, so I'm going to go into the developer tools that you guys will use to um, build any projects for the hackathon. Um, but before I do that, I want to talk a bit about the difference between um, app architecture between Web2 and Web3. So yeah, for those of you who are completely new to blockchain development, there are a few core features that change the way to think about what is possible to build on the blockchain. Um, web 2 and Web 3 share the same architectural flow generally. Um, you have a front-end client for UI interaction. And whether you're developing an application for Web 2 or Web 3, you can still use the same front end libraries and frameworks. So um, most common right now is like JavaScript or TypeScript for building front end front ends um, using a framework like React, Vue, or Angular. Um, 
or React Native or Native Script for, for mobile development. Um, that's true whether you're building Web 2 or Web 3. So if you guys are looking to build web interfaces, um, you have front-end development skills. You guys can team up with a front-end developer. Um, it, hold on a sec. Yeah, um, their skills will be directly relevant from building um, on Web3. There's a few, um, there's a few differences in terms of like how you're going to manage your data, but uh, there's tons of examples out there for how to uh, pull that stuff into into your application. And I'd be happy to dig into that with you guys specifically um, in a one-on-one -on -one session or during office hours. Um, so beyond the interface, there's there's code that runs and in shared informational state for for applications. Um, in Web2 applications, that's a centralized database where there's hidden, um, there's like private app state, um, private logic, and, and private data. So people don't really have access to this, and applications can decide what information to share, what information not to share. Um, and when you're interacting with a Web2 app, this data is kind of like arbitrarily structured. Um, if you think about like interacting with a social media application like Facebook, um, they're going to organize their, their databases based on users and their posts. Um, or if you're interacting with Google Docs, um, they're going to structure their data based on a document and everything you can do with the document. So um, it's just like you trust the application that you're interacting with to behave in a certain way. Um, and, and it does. And it just runs the way they tell you. And a consequence of this is like hiding sensitive data is actually easy because Google can just encrypt their data in the servers um, and not make it publicly accessible. Um, in Web3, this is pretty different. So we have a blockchain where there's where all data is public. Um, you can look up every account on chain and you can look up every balance. Um, and there may be smart contract code associated with, with those accounts. Um, so the logic is public as well. Um, anyone can verify this data. You can go on the Block Explorer right now and, and check this. Um, that's part of what makes a blockchain secure, is like everybody can verify that data is what um, is what it is. Part of this publicity, like making private data is harder. Um, so yeah, you just have to be cognizant of like what you can share in smart contracts or what data you're actually publishing on chain. Um, there's, there's a lot of information in like traditional applications that you actually wouldn't want to publish publicly um, anywhere. So I'm just being cognizant of that. Um, if we like look at the middle box, there's the, the payment processor aspect where we have traditional Web2 companies like PayPal and Stripe um, that are providing payment services through centralized databases and just um, keeping data private. Um, this is very different on a blockchain where we just have a crypto wallet um, where all data is public and essentially you there's like guarantees about the balances in your wallet and um, the inability of others to transfer value on your behalf based on cryptography. Um, so that's part of like just the architecture of um, how blockchains are different and how accounts are really a, a core component of uh, the blockchain architecture. And then that ties directly with like state changes. So um, in web two applications, like for payment processing, like PayPal is essentially authorizing every update to um, their database and they're, they're controlling that. It's not a publicly um, accessible database. You can't look up everybody's PayPal balance. Um, but in a blockchain, that those state changes and those updates are controlled by, by cryptography um, and private keys are managing those um, those updates on behalf of users. That's why private keys are so sensitive and why um, you need to be very careful when handling private key information and relying on like professionally built wallets for, for things like this is, is the best practice. Um, so touching on accounts, um, because they are such a foundational part of all blockchain architectures, um, in Celo, it's very similar to Ethereum, where we have an account address. Um, 
there's just a whole bunch of account addresses in, in the ledger, basically. And then there's balances associated with, with each address. Um, and those are associated with their, their token balances. Um, in this table, you can see every account has a balance, and some accounts have code. Um, accounts with associated code are smart contracts. So those are accounts that will actually execute logic based on transactions that are sent to them, what, that, what those um, transaction details are. And um, yeah, that's essentially how um, DeFi applications are built, where they'll just have these accounts that will manage funds based on incoming transactions. There, you'll see there are also accounts without code. Um, those are, they're commonly referred to as externally owned accounts. Um, you can also think of them as wallet accounts where they have, they're controlled by a private key instead of code. And they're usually controlled, well, they're, they're controlled by people instead of um, by, the, by the contract code. So um, interactions on chain are, are dictated by transactions coming from these accounts with no associated code. Um, yeah, so that's that's like a very brief overview of the like basics of um, things you should know about when thinking about what types of applications you can build. Um, I have some links in the resources to the documentation that go mu into much more detail about like these specifics about um, architecture and, and accounts, and then the actual consequences for what you can build, but. Um, I want to get into um, the tools of like what you guys can use to, to be successful building your projects. Um, and yeah, I just want to highlight that this is meant to be a starting po point for you to show what is available. And we can dig into any of these tools during office hours or on Discord. Um, so yeah, this is just a, meant to be like a cursory overview and. Um, we can go into more detail depending on uh, what you guys actually want to build. Um, but I want to like provide a, a pretty good overview um, to, to provide resources, to, like no matter what you guys are actually looking to build, um, some of these should be useful. So Josh, yeah. I just wanted to hop in before you kind of move on and just say, if there are any questions, guys, you can drop them in the chat or in the Q and A section and, uh, and we'll get to them. So. Feel free to do that at any time. Yeah. And Connor, feel free to share the, the presentation link. Um, I made this presentation public so any of you guys can view it. Um, I've got a lot of links throughout it, and there's a big list of links at the end um, so you guys can uh, yeah, reference it as you need. Cool. Thanks. Um, so Contract Kit is one of the um, like core, core kits in our SDK. Um, it's a JavaScript package of Celo blockchain utilities, and it helps manage connections uh, to the Celo blockchain, help you manage accounts, um, send transactions on behalf of users, and interact with smart contracts, things like that. So there's an easy interaction with native assets like uh, Celo and Celo dollars. Um, and it comes with core contract wrappers that are already initialized, so you don't have to initialize core contracts for every application. Um, and you can just easily interact with things like um, elections, governance process, um, the on-chain exchange, the, the stable asset uh, contracts, um, tokens like that. So it just makes it easy to get started uh, interacting with our, our core contracts. Um, an another cool thing is it provides easy access to the core lightweight identity layer, um, which is that phone number mapping I was talking about. So you guys can actually look up people's phone numbers and help them register their phone numbers outside of other applications if that's something you want to provide in your own project. Um, and it allows you to easily pay transaction fees in the alternative currencies. So you can just set your fee currency to CUSD. And then all, your tr all the transactions sent on behalf of the user will be sent in several dollars. Um, yeah, I have a link here too for, for some code examples. So you guys can go through like essentially the hello world of using contract kit where you're going to send some cello on behalf of a user, send some CEOSD, 
um, and then interact with it with the contract as well. So that's a that's a good intro. If you guys are in interested in learning the code uh, code behind contract kit, um, we also have the the Cello CLI, which is a command line interface. Um, essentially, it's a command line interface around the contract kit. So it allows users to interact with the Cello protocol smart contracts without having to write JavaScript. You can just um, write some command line tools and um, I honestly use this a lot as a code reference since the Cello CLI is using the contract kit. Um, it's a really good example of like how to do specific things. Um, and again, there's like modules for interacting with a lot of the modules provided in the contract kit. So whether you want to help users participate in elections or participate in on-chain governance and voting for validators, if you want to help users interact with multi-sig contracts, um, like essentially accounts controlled by multiple people at once. Um, there's utilities here to help with that. Um, and then also looking up validator details. Um, yeah, Block Scout. Block Scout is a C Labs hosted block explorer. Um, I'll actually jump over to it because it's pretty powerful and it's pretty cool. Um, it's, a, it's a block explorer as well as API endpoints. Um, and it allows you to just like look up a lot of information about what's going on on Cello. Um, you can see like blocks are being produced right here every five seconds, a new one's popping up. Um, sometimes it lags out and doesn't add a new one, but you can still see the time. Um, you can see average block time, total transactions, all these details. But I really use it a lot for looking into specific transaction details. Um, this is the main net right now, but I'll get into like the test net. We have this block explorer for the test net as well. Um, but it's really useful for like clicking on a transaction um, and then you can see details around um, the gas currency. This is the CUSD contract. Um, and you can see like the internal details of the transaction. So if you're, if you're interacting with your own custom smart contracts or maybe some existing um, DeFi contracts, you can look these look up the details here um and see exactly like how value is moving between accounts um i like looking at this logs page it actually these are like events that are emitted from smart contracts on chain so i can see there's like the transfer event um the from address the to address the value um this is really useful for like um playing around and like learning how blockchain data is structured as well as like how value is moving between um accounts so, hey, Josh. Yeah. Um, uh, it looks like I'm frozen right now, but someone just dropped a question in chat and they said they have to hop off in a second. So it's not directly related to this, but they said, uh, I just want to know how I can develop Cello contracts on Remix using Cello plugin and Cello extension wallet. Yeah. Maybe, uh, do you want to cover that now or maybe at the end? I have it later in the in the deck. Okay. Um, I can do a Perfect. quick, um, I'll just jump over that tag because I have it open. I'll just highlight um, in Remix, there's this plugin button, and you can activate the Cello plugin. Um, I already have it activated here. Um, and once you have the Cello plugin activated, you also do need the, the Chrome browser extension wallet, which I have here. Um, I have a link to download this specific wallet in the deck so you can you can get it. Um, you can add the testnet endpoint yourself to do the custom RPC tab or the, the option um, to connect to Alcores and then faucet your account some funds. Um, and you can like pick a contract, um, go to Cello, you can compile it and you can deploy it. I'll just do it real quick. For those of you that aren't familiar with this, this is probably a lot of stuff real quick. Um, but we can go into more details later and ask more questions. We can see my contract deployment just went through on the network. I'm going to pop it open on the block explorer and I can see this contract creation event just happened. Um, so that's all working. Um, that's super quick. I know if you have more questions about it, uh, feel free to ping me on discord and, uh, we can do a, a more in-depth session on using remix because it is a, it's more advanced thing that not everybody's going to be um, using probably. So um, 
yeah, we can go into your specific needs later on. Cool. Um, so back to the, the block explorer. Um, yeah, it's really cool for just looking at transactions and seeing how values flow in between accounts. One thing I want to highlight is we have this API endpoint as well. Um, so if you just want to like programmatically fetch data from from the chain without running your own node, um, you can hit this endpoint. I know it says localhost 4000 slash API right here. But if you go to just cello.org slash API and then add these um, additional parameters um, to that query, you can get all this data. But you can look up information about accounts, um, about contract logs, about block statistics, about contracts, about specific transactions. So you can get a lot of like insight into account history, um, current activity on chain through this API endpoint. And this will be familiar to people whether you're, um, you've developed blockchain applications or not. Because um, you're just going to do, you're just going to be fetching data from this API endpoint about accounts. Um, so that's a really great way to um, get information uh, from from Jane. So um, yeah, you can use. Yeah, I think I covered all that. So um, yeah, the Block Explorer is a really powerful tool, and I use it a lot when I'm working on um, even just like going through contract examples and. Um, like the docs tutorials, I'll check all my transactions on chain just to see, um, verify that what I think is happening is actually happening. Um, so the Alpha Hori's testnet, I just alluded to this a bit. Um, the Alpha Hori's testnet is the testnet for application developers. We actually have essentially three networks for Cello right now. We have the Cello mainnet, which is where all your assets are real assets. And if you're going to be trading on exchanges like that's um, where those assets are. Um, we have the Alpha Horus testnet, which is for application developers in the sense that we provide wallets that make it easy to connect to the Alpha Horus testnet. And if we make it easy to get test funds on Alpha Horus. So you can get Celo and COSD by just going to um, this Alpha Horus faucet link here. Um, sorry. And yeah, you can just, in a couple seconds, you can get test funds to send transactions and, and play with play with value that behaves in a very similar way to, to how it would on mainnet. Um, and then we also have the Baklova testnet, which is the Baklova testnet, testnet is more designed for validators and testing protocol changes. Um, so you guys most likely will not be developing on Baklova. If you have an idea for a project that um, uses more protocol features in terms of like handling like the community fund or um, uniquely handling epoch rewards like block rewards or staking rewards it might be useful to um, develop on baklava but if you guys think about going that route um, just connect with me and we can figure out which one's the best way which testnet's the best one to for you guys to work on um, but I'd say 99% of you are going to be working on the Alpha Horus testnet. Um, yeah, with the Alpha Horus faucet, we have uh, CUSD and Celo available. Um, when we have when Celo Euro launches, we're going to figure out um, how to get Celo Euro in the hands of people so they can be, be playing with that as well. Um, and then there's there's the Celo developer wallets, which are um, different than our mainnet wallet. So they're wallets that are specifically connecting to the Alpha Horus testnet. And we, we kind of keep those behind a, a wall because we don't want the general public accidentally develop or accidentally downloading a testnet wallet and thinking it's the real thing. Um, so there's a link here to actually get those um, wallets, but just reach out to me if you have any problems with anything. Um, I'm going to go into more details on that in, in a bit. Um, I also want to highlight Forno. So Forno is a way to connect to the Celo network without having to run your own node. Um, you can just connect to a node essentially through an HTTP or a WebSocket connection. Um, and yeah, it just makes it easy to get data from the chain or send signed transactions to the network. 
Um, because this network, because Forno is like publicly accessible, if you're going to be sending transactions through Forno, they need to already be signed before you send them. Um, so you're going to have to like manage uh, local, have like having users sign their transactions locally through, um, preferably like a wallet like Valora uh, before sending it onto the network. Um, I also want to highlight Figment Data Hub, which is a, a service very similar to Forno. Um, they have some additional features where you can like track how people are using your application in terms of like what types of requests and how many requests are actually coming through the endpoints. Um, and they have options to, like if you start getting a lot of traction with your project, you can uh, pay for additional uh, queries. Because uh, if, you're, if you're just, if you're making tons of requests to a network, you could uh, get get blocked. So Figment Data Hub's a good like professional grade solution for like more more popular projects. Diving a bit deeper into the Cello wallets available, um, we have native mobile wallets. So on Android, um, there's a link there that goes directly to the to the store. And you actually have to go to that link on your mobile device to install it. You can't go on your your desktop. It will um, give you an error. And if it doesn't work for you, I have APKs that I can just send you guys. Um, if you want to get the, the iOS app, you can uh, sign up for test flight. Um, I have links here to web wallets um, or wallets that you can download um, and just run on your desktop. And these have connections to Alpha Hores as well. Um, here's a link to the Chrome browser extension that I showed you guys here, um, which is a fork of MetaMask. Um, and there is ledger support for these, these web wallets. Um, we don't have ledger support for uh, our Android or iOS apps yet. Um, hey, Josh, one question just came in. Is Forno similar to Postman for making API calls? Um, Forno, not exactly. Um, I don't use Postman regularly in any development, but from what I understand, it's, it's really good for testing. Um, and you can make live calls with it, but it's kind of like gives you visibility into um, kind of what the calls are. Forno is more just like, you can think of it like a relay service for a node in the sense um, you can make any query on Forno that you would against your local node, but you don't have to run the node yourself. Um, the, the disadvantage is you can't do account management through a four node node. Where if, whereas if you're running a node yourself locally, um, you can use that node for account management as well. Great. Um, another one, this one, I think you've kind of covered, but, uh, for starters, how do I set up my connection with Cello? Yeah. Four is going to be the way to make that connection. Um, there's, if you click on the link on this slide, um, it's gonna go to the Forno page at the docs and it will show you exactly how to make that connection. It's literally one line of JavaScript to connect contract kit to Forno. And then all of that, all of those packages you get with contract kit in terms of interacting with the contracts, um, doing account management for people sending transactions, like all of those connections are gonna be routed through Forno. So you just, set it up to connect once at the top of your script. Um, and then it's just going to connect to the appropriate network. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just a one liner makes it pretty easy. Um, and then there's one other one um, from Ian, but uh, he said he has a problem running the, the hello mobile DAP with like the truffle box. But I think that might be better for discord. If you can talk about like this. Okay. After installing all the dependencies, when you tr now try to launch the app with Expo, I see about six errors and two warnings. Okay. Yeah. Maybe that's a Discord discussion? Yeah. Or do you have yeah, anything on that? Yeah, we can put the details on that. Um, we can talk about it in one of the public uh, hackathon channels so we can resolve the errors. Um, I will say, like, I'm going to show a video on how to do the DAP uh, quickly. And there are, like, a number of errors that pop up um, just, like, in the normal operation of things. But they aren't aren't blockers. But um, 
yeah, I'll do a quick video of how it's intended to work and then we can debug it later on. Um, cool. And then one uh, more quick one. Forno is like Infura. Exactly. Yes. Sweet. Yep. Forno is exactly like Infura. Um, I'd say it's probably a little bit lighter weight in the sense like we don't have the more advanced paid features, but yeah, it's just like an endpoint where you make a connection. Um, Figment data hub is probably more similar to Infura with like the more advanced features, but it's a good way to think about it. Um, yeah, the last two, the last general tool I want to talk about is DatKit, which is part of our SDK designed to help build mobile first apps. Um, so we designed it to work with Expo for easy setup. Um, it's it's like opinionated in the sense like it's designed to work with React Native. Um, and it makes it really easy to connect to Valora, the Valora wallet, to allow users to um, sign transactions using that wallet. So um, leaving private key management, that sensitive information, leave that to an app designed for that. And then you can use DapKit, and any developer can use DapKit to link to Valora to have users um, sign transactions or make connections to the network to like read account balances or, or get their phone number that's linked to Valora um, and yeah, get that information in an easy, easily consumable way. So um, when is this? Is this cut off for you guys? Let's see. Okay. So this is um, the DatKit truffle box. I have it linked to in the resources and I guess it might not be working out of the box right now, but I can double check after this. Um, I'm just going to show how it's like intended to work. Um, this is a, a simple, like bare bones project um, that's going to use DatKit and a, a, de a deployed Hello World contract. Um, so I'm running this application that like comes out comes out of the box with the Truffle box, um, and it just has a few buttons on having a user log in, having a user read a contract name, and then having a user update that contract. Um, so it's just going to go through a few of those actions to show you guys how it works. Um, this is all with Expo. Um, that button right there, it's the user clicks log in, and then to log in, like I have multiple Cello wallets on my phone, so it's asking me which one I would like to open it with. And since I'm working on the Alpha Horus testnet, I'm going to choose my Cello Alpha um, application, and then it's going to connect to my Alpha Horus wallet. So it's gonna share my address. Um, once that info is shared, I don't know if you guys can see it, it might be kind of small, but it's giving my account address, my phone number associated uh, with my Valora account, and then my cell, my cello dollar balance. And it's just showing that information um, in a very like simple way right now. Um, there's also a contract that's been deployed as part of this example. Um, I just read the name and it's two wave emojis and then I'm going to click the update contract name, and I'm going to type in a new uh, new contract name. I'm going to click update. I'm going to choose my Alpha Horus wallet, and then uh, Valora is asking me if I'd like to sign this transaction. Um, I'm going to permit that that transaction to be signed. Since I'm sending a state update, it's asking me to verify with my PIN. Um, I'm just going to click read contract name. And it just just process the transaction and updated. So um, this is like a very simple example of how to use the the DAP kit as well as like deploying a contract and connecting to a deployed contract. So um, that truffle box is a really good way just to like get an intro into how um, DAP kit can be used. Um, Jan, I'm, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to go a little bit through quickly through the rest because these are some more advanced tools that might not be relevant for everybody. But I just wanted to highlight the the Otis service that we have. This is one of the unique things we have on Celo that enables the um, phone number identity mapping. So mapping the Celo addresses to phone numbers. Um, it's called Otis. It's the Oblivious Decentralized Identity Service. Um, it's part of the core infrastructure for the attestation service. Um, the attestation service is the phone number identity mapping. Um, and I have a link here that sh will show you how to like, query on-chain identifiers with Otis. So if you want to interact with this phone number mapping system outside of Valora, 
um, looking into this tool will be really, really cool. Um, this will be an advanced feature. I'm, I'm hoping somebody uh, will build build something with the Otis, Otis system because it's a really cool thing. Um, so the next few tools I'm going to talk about go specifically into smart contracts and how you can write them, um, deploy them to Celo, and like how to think about developing them. Um, so smart contracts you can think of as like money vending machines that follow a set of, of program instructions um, as simply as possible. Um, we have protocol contracts on Celo. There's also application specific contracts. Um, this, this diagram helps uh, clarify it a bit where we have like the Celo blockchain protocols, like the lowest layer. And um, we have some core contracts that include like our election process, things that run our proof of stake system, um, on-chain governance, things like that. They're just smart contracts that are like part of the core protocol. And then we have application contracts. Um, these are things that C-Labs isn't necessarily directly developing, but like I, I'm hoping to help you guys build um, at this application layer. Um, you can build projects that deploy their own uh, application smart contracts, or you can develop applications that just interact with existing core contracts. Josh, quick, uh, quick question again. Um, apart from being able to set gas payment to different tokens, is there any difference between using contractkit.web3 and Ethereum Web3.js to interact with a deployed contract? Um, there are some subtle differences. Um, I will say if you want to use Web3.js functions, um, Web3.js does come with contract kit. So like when you set up, when you initialize your contract kit, you're going to make a connection to Forno. Um, you're going to do some some additional things in terms of like just initializing um, at the top of your script. Um, if you're going to continue to use, if you want to use Web3 functions, you can just use like uh, contract kit that Web3, and then you have all of the same functions available um, right on the the Web3 JS subset of contract kit. Um, so if you want to use Web3 JS functions, I just recommend going that route. Um, it also just helps you keep everything in one place. Like I've written some scripts where I'm using contract, I initialize contract kit, and then I also import Web3, um, and I start using the the Web3 version that wasn't initialized with contract kit later in the script, and it causes errors and it's just confusing. So you do have all that function avail functionality available right in contract kit. So I'd recommend sticking with that. Um, yeah, so contract kit kind of like sits between this core contract layer and the application layer in the sense like contract kit makes connections to these core contracts. Um, so it, it's, yeah, it's a useful tool um, for the interface between like the core contract and the application layer. Um, you could think of Valora, the Valora wallet as an application at the application layer. Um, and DAPKit helps interface up here at this application layer. Um, this diagram helps just show like what the core contracts are and like what you guys might find useful. Um, if you develop an application that wants to interact with these contracts, um, it's a great way to do it without having to write your own. Some contracts to note that you might want to use um, the exchange contract as part of the stability protocol, um, allows you to exchange stable assets and Celo. Um, also, the CUSD contract, if you're doing any uh, stable token transfers, any Celo dollar transfers, um, you'll be interacting with this. And Contract Kit makes these interactions really easy. Also, we have a random contract that helps with random number generation. Uh, ra generating random numbers on a blockchain is actually pretty hard, um, but this contract will help you guys help you guys do that. Um, some applications there might be like lottery style contracts. Um, we also have uh, our proof of state contracts, which will help with like, if you're interested in helping people lock their cello and earn rewards on that lock cello to get a return on, on their savings, um, some of these proof of state contracts might be helpful. So since cello is running the EVM, which is obviously um, 
running on Ethereum as well. Um, a lot of the there's a lot of overlap in tools between these. So for writing smart contracts, you can use Solidity. For uh, developing projects and like contract management, you can use the Truffle framework, um, which helps you build, test, and deploy smart contracts. Um, a lot of the examples in the documentation and the code walkthroughs use Truffle projects, so it's a good intro there. Um, I earlier. like MetaMask wallet, and then also the Alpha Horus test network is going to be really helpful for deploying and testing your smart contracts. Um, Solidity is an object-oriented high-level language for writing smart contracts. It's the most popular language on Ethereum, so there's pretty good support um, in terms of tooling and um, resources for learning about Solidity. If you're familiar with Python or JavaScript or, or C++, like picking up Solidity isn't isn't that hard. Um, but just remember that like this is a highly consequential environment where if you're building applications that are handling people's funds, like we want to be very sure about um, what you're building. For a hackathon project, I would worry less about this and just like um, building something that does something cool rather than being totally secure at first. But um, it is good to keep in mind. And you can leverage existing work done on Ethereum open source projects. Like a lot of DeFi projects on Ethereum or on Celo are just being forked from Ethereum with minimal tweaks right now um, because they're both running the EVM. It's, it's pretty easy to do. Um, Truffle is a development environment and testing framework and asset pipeline for blockchains using the EVM. Um, so it allows you to write contracts in your favorite development environment. Um, you just install Truffle in your project, and the Truffle project will will run scripts to deploy your contracts to like the Alphorus testnet or mainnet, um, whatever you specify in the configuration file. And then you can also run unit tests against your deployed contracts to make sure that they're running as you expect. And another cool thing it does is like keeps track of all your contract deployments and your upgrades and the like the deployment history. So um, if you're if you have a project that's being maintained over the course of a long time. Um, this is really useful, just because you can always have that history. And Remix is something that I went over a bit earlier, like really quickly. Um, this might be something we want to dive into in office hours because we're short on time. Um, but I showed you earlier, like it, there's a there's a place for you to write smart contracts. Um, and then with the Celo extension wallet and the Remix plugin, you can actually deploy contracts right to the testnet or the Celo mainnet. Um, and you can also use it to connect to and interact with already deployed contracts as well if you just want to like, mess around and um, send transactions to contracts that are already there. So here's a list of resources that will help you like dive into each one of the slides that I talked about. Um, you guys should have the, the deck so you can click on these. I um, want to highlight down here, I have a meeting link um, for Calendly where you guys can schedule like 15 minutes with me, like a one-on-one, -on -one, and we can go into details about um, what your project is or talk about ideas or specific tools or literally whatever you guys want. I'm just here for support for you guys. Um, and then another link to join Discord if you guys haven't done that yet. Um, so I know we're at noon right now um, and we don't have time for Q&A, but maybe we can uh, continue this on Discord. So um, yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, I'm really excited to help you explore Celo, learn about the tools, and figure out the, the best things to build. Awesome. Thank you so much, Josh. Um, all right. I think my video is still frozen, at least for me. But uh, um, we had one last question that came in. Could you kindly share the browser extension wallet link? Is that in the, the presentation, perhaps? It is, yes. Um, let me see if I can grab it real quick. That should be it. Um, I just want to highlight, like, there's a bug, I think. I don't know if I have an older version, but, like, the default networks, if you click on mainnet or alpha hores, like, it's going to freeze. Um, this isn't this wallet is in production. Like, it's very much in development as well. We actually just funded a grant to make this, like, a production-grade application, but it's it's in, I'd say, alpha right now. Um, it's usable, 
but um, you might have to add the networks manually through that custom RPC um, option in the networks dropdown. And you can just have this wallet connect directly to Forno. So those Forno endpoints that you can get from earlier in the deck, um, you just go to the Forno docs and it'll give you the Forno endpoint for mainnet and the Forno endpoint for Alpha Hoyas. You can just add those endpoints in that custom RPC tab and then that will make a connection directly to um, the appropriate network for you. So if it doesn't work for you, I recommend doing that and then you should have those connections working. Awesome. All right, Josh, thank you so much. Um, and thank you everyone who, uh, who hopped in and stuck around the whole time. Um, as, as Josh said, you can find him in Discord. Um, you can find me in the Gitcoin or Solo Discord or in the Town Square. And, uh, and yeah, I dropped this link a few times in the chat. This will be on YouTube if you guys want to go back and watch anything. And you should also have the presentation link. So, uh, so yeah, thank you guys so much for joining. Thanks, Connor. Thanks, everyone. Cool. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.